Hi, welcome to one of our Who Are We discussions. Today we hear more about one of our new expert partners, Room Price Genie. Joining us for this discussion is Thomas Landon, Chief Marketing Genie. Thomas tells us more about the company, when they were founded, and the backstory to its inception. We hear about their typical client profile, geographical focus, and how they go about adding value to their clients. Really hope you enjoy the conversation. Roll the intro. Hey Thomas, thanks for joining us today. And first and foremost, thank you for Room Price Genie coming on board as an expert partner. And thank you, as I say, for you joining us for one of our Who Are We interviews, which is a relatively short and sweet kind of bit of background, setting the scene, who are Room Price Genie, what are you guys all about? Um, so yeah, welcome on board. Uh, first of all, it would thank probably you. make sense to get you to introduce yourself and let us know who you are, and then we'll talk a bit more about Room Price Genie. So over to you. Excellent. Thanks, Trevor. Um, so first of all, I, uh, great to be here. Uh, as always, the borderline uh, check to get that off the way. Um, so I'm Thomas. I am uh, Ruben Price Genie's uh, Chief Marketing Officer. I joined uh, since last year, mid of last year. And um, uh, as you can uh, probably guess by the title, I look after all our marketing and branding and communications uh, for the company. Um, and a little bit about myself. I come from a hotel background, studied hospitality in the Netherlands. Uh, Lived uh, had a, a nice little stint about ten years in the U.S. A little shy of where I worked in hotels and worked in different marketing uh, roles, and then um, moved back here. Now I live back in Amsterdam, where I'm originally from, the Netherlands, and I live here with my uh, two kids and my wife here in uh, here in our place. Sunny, sunny Netherlands. I can see it reflecting there. <laughs> <laughs> So well, the, the one you, you call you got, it the one day a year that it's sunny, so perfect. Well, enjoy that, enjoy that, and we'll enjoy it with yeah. you. So, room price genie. Let's get some of the what I call kind of the basics, fundamentals out of the way. Let's touch on when yeah. was room price genie founded? Where are you located? Kind of how big are you as a as a as a company? Let's kick off with those to start with. Let, let, let's start with the founding. So, uh, room price genie was. Um, Founded by our, our founder Ari, uh, Ari, and, and, and I always have a very difficult uh, time pronouncing his last name, but I'll do my best. Is Andre Kopoulos. <laughs> Um He is actually from the UK, and uh, uh, he started his career in uh, in building. Uh, after getting a PhD in mathematics, he built trading algorithms for oh, okay. uh, financial markets. And uh, his dad actually has an um, had a, at that point a bed and breakfast in the UK, uh, with a small fifteen room bed and breakfast, and uh, in 2017, he started kind of tinkering. Hey, if I apply the the, the mathematical logic of of uh, of trading uh, currencies that he did at that time to actually optimizing prices for the hotel, would that work? And and that's kind of the the original uh, you know, the, the starting of the starting point of the company. Um, so he started tinkering with the idea and, and building uh, building uh, a system that to to help him automate the prices based on uh, based on current events and based on pickup and things like that that we know. Um, and along the way, that that grew uh, in in end of 2017, beginning of 2018, the two uh, other co-founders, Marvin and Jörg, joined. Um, and in 2019, in mid 2019, the commercial start of the company that was when the first customers came on board besides the test test property yeah. for his dad um and then it, then it grew from there uh ari is now uh, based in switzerland our uh, office is actually in uh in uh, Mannheim in germany and our teams are now global around the world but we can grew from 2019 as, as our first customers 2021, uh, they got uh, the Focus Right uh, awards, uh, Sidewinder awards, and and that's how really kind of the yeah the the, the engine started, kind of the, the, the impetus the growth started, and yeah exactly, and um, and now we're we're with a team of 50 uh, uh, genies around the globe. From uh, we all work from home, or most of us work from home. A couple of people work in the office, and uh, we have about 1,500 customers uh, from any any place in the world uh um that's pretty good going in a short period of time and also when we mustn't forget that during i mean a year after you guys 
yeah. started rocking and rolling commercially, as you say, the, the world kind of changed a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and then and, and luckily it changed back to, to as, it, as it was before. But yeah, you, you, you're 100% right. And, and now we definitely see yeah, the, 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 the COVID period, if you look at the numbers, was, a, was obviously a rocky period for all of us in, in hospitality tech. But now, uh, yeah, the last uh, last twelve months, the growth has definitely come on, and and we're very fortunate. You know, this uh, last year, end of last year, we won the um, hospitality uh, hotel tech report, uh, third place. Uh, but as well, now we see really customers picking up on the concept of uh, of revenue management. Right, it's much yeah. more uh, accessible and much more applicable for many hotels now. Absolutely. Now you mentioned fifteen hundred. Uh, clients that you're working with can you give us a, a kind of an overview do you have a I mean I'm sure you do business with anyone but I mean do you do you tend to have <laughs> yeah. a typical client profile and any geographical regions that you focus more yeah and, and uh, there's definitely let's start with the, the latter question geographical areas right the, the areas where we where we strongest and focus most on are, are uh, mainland Europe uh, including the UK um, the the US and Canada and Australia and New Zealand those mm -hmm. are kind of our core focus markets and that's where we find most of our customers being a Swiss company German company most of our customers are in that that region mm -hmm. um, but we have the ability to 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 operate it basically anywhere most of our uh, hotels that we work with are small and independent and I know those are kind of two concepts that are require a little bit of definition well let's start with small in average, uh, our room count is roughly 25 mm -hmm. uh, uh, rooms per hotel. And uh, we we have ranges from, I think, the largest two to 80 or something like that, to literally people that have two rooms uh, with, a, with a pop and two rooms above it. Um, but in average, we, we work, we focus on smaller uh, hotels and independent. Independent is another nice, nice catchphrase, <laughs> or nice bucket phrase, which is always difficult to... Uh, but we, we we don't focus on the on the and certainly not on the enterprise brands and the Hiltons and the Windows and these type of things, but neither on the larger brands. So uh, the the Motel Ones and the Roccafortes and these okay. type of yeah. uh, larger investor driven brands. Um, so we yeah our, our our customers on that sense uh, that's kind of the profile of the hotel. If you look at the hotel itself, most, uh, the vast majority of, of uh, the, our customers or users, let's say it like that, are uh, either uh, owner operators or managers of a general kind of hotel manager, general manager of a hotel. We typically uh, don't sell to revenue managers. Uh, we sell, we make, we make products actually for non-revenue experts. That's kind of mm -hmm. our philosophy of building products. So. If you look at our customer profile and then in terms of size and uh, and, um, and and users, that's that's where we work with. Perfect. Uh, let's talk as you've as you brought it up uh, around your yeah. your product and where it's targeted to. Let's let's actually look at the Room Price Genie product. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe maybe before we hear what you know where your focus is or how your focus of product ties with your client. Maybe we could go back a little bit. And what was the mm -hmm. kernel of the idea? I mean, as you say, it was started way back a few years ago, looking at applying yeah. uh, the, the trading trading techniques yeah, yeah, into exactly. into rooms. So was it just it was it was it purely just the natural progression from there, or was there a a, a moment in time? Just take us back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so if you look at the core of what it's in our name, it's not that difficult to, 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 <laughs> to probably guess, but we do room prices, right? Revenue management has a lot of aspects to it, a lot of different uh, angles to it, and it's gotten more complex and, and broad over the years. But our, our essence, our core, uh, where it started is really um, room price optimization. So really asking the right price for the right you know, room type. Mm -hmm. um, and, and specifically focused again on, on uh, uh, smaller uh, hotels. And, and this is what we, what we build the algorithm for that you also can set this in, in the application to based on the number of rooms. So if you have 10 hotel rooms and you sell two, that's a huge pickup in terms of percentage yeah, percent, yeah, of rooms yeah. that you have available and sell. If you have hundred, you know, you do the math. Um, so that that was the focus of uh, the original start of the of the product, and obviously that grew over time with more 
features and, and, and functionality and other types of uh, d d other dimensions of revenue management added to it. Mm -hmm. um, and at this point, it's, it's, it is, uh, you know, it's a full-fledged revenue management. We don't do food and beverage. We don't do parking. We don't do meeting and event space. Uh, we don't do group business. Uh, so not all what still people would call ancillary. That, it's just all room focused. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's room focused, but within the room focused, we do everything that you expect from a from a product. Um, but really, the focus, if you look at and talk to our talk to our teams and and to our engineers, the focus is all around like, hey, I'm a non revenue manager. How do I actually operate the system? And this was quite interesting, I think, for for looking at the usage and and uh, the users as well. So, most of our users just turn it on and yep. just let it go. They, okay, they, so they, it's all know, automatic. Onboard. And... Exactly. It, you, you onboard, you look at it a little bit because hey, there's, there's still, in, in uh, obviously, when your title is revenue management, you believe that, a revenue manager, you believe that automated or, or, or dynamic pricing is something you should apply to a hotel. Mm -hmm. But when you have a hotel uh, somewhere in the, in the Swiss Alps with uh, 15 rooms and you've had it for the second or third generation, yeah. and you've always had a high season and low season rate, this is a new concept for people. They're like, well, I've never had dynamic pricing. How does it work? So when they onboard, they're kind of always a little bit skeptical and, and, and thoughtful. Like, hey, well, you know, I want to check and want to validate that everything is actually happening as I, as I expect it to be. But after a while, we see these people like, you know, turn it on and, and not even log in uh, and let the system run. Very good. Very good. And so I guess that's uh, having, I mean, there's a big step between you sitting there with your father's business and thinking, can I apply some of my knowledge to then yeah. saying, okay, there's a business opportunity at a time, because if I get the timeline right, this was 2000, as you said, 2017, things started to go 2019. Correct. I mean, there were a number of RMS providers already in that space at that time yeah so there was obviously a feeling that there wasn't yeah. anything like the room price genie solution i'm guessing otherwise why would you have made that leap exactly and, and and it's always easy to kind of compare and contrast yourself to to competitors and then, but but just to uh, a couple of things that also help us in the industry at large just to 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 make it easier right i think one is uh, the move from pmss to to cloud and with that majority of the pmss being much easier to integrate with is definitely something that helped us along the way mm -hmm. uh, so that is something a trend that is a general trend i think the second general trend is that you see is that the hospitality tech is becoming more common right it's it's uh, uh, it's it's much more an acceptable thing for hoteliers to kind of investigate and and, and shop and and learn about hotel tech and and see what that they can do for their business. So there's definitely trends that helped us along the way. But if you you know to make a little bit of a comparison with our competitors, most of our competitor products are built for revenue managers, right? If you're a revenue manager, you want the most um, sophisticated tool, and you should, right? You, you, it's your job to sit in that, and you want to be able to slice and dice data of any way and what if scenarios, and if I do this, what happens then, and these type of things. Well, again, our our profile is um, a majority of hotel owners or front desk or you know front of house uh, managers, and they just not, they're not full time revenue managers. They do a lot of things. They have enough to do, yeah. But they want, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But they want to make sure that they don't leave. Uh, you know, don't leave opportunity or money on the table in that sense, and that's where where our product kind of fits in. And 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 it now, um, if I've, I've talked to customers, if I talk to to and and uh, why customers join, it's like it's not that they're like, oh, I wanna I wanna spend hours in the product and really you know understand exactly what pick up so and the, what the situation that we got to this 85 euro price yeah no i just want to yeah. make sure that i don't sell out too early and if there's something happens in the industry in the in the area that i'm not full at the at the uh, at the rate that uh, that uh, was too low um that's that's their their worry in that sense so it it's almost you know whether it's owner however it's however it's working mm -hmm. you know single property they will know about revenue management they would have read about revenue management people would have spoken to them probably about revenue management but their view is hey i don't have the time i don't need a sophisticated solution i've i've got a smaller property but 
I'm also aware that if I just have a fixed price at any given time, yeah. that I'm probably missing out on either some bookings because I may be too high or I'm missing out on some revenue because I may be too low. So either way, I'm missing something. I just want a solution that I can have running for me that's just making sure that when I'm focused on looking after the guests that I've got and sorting out my yeah. supplies and sorting out my bills and everything else I have to do to keep the light switched on, something's working in the background to make sure that my pricing is, is at the best point that it can be. Is that a fair? That's, that's the ideal customer because they're always <laughs> convinced about dynamic pricing and they're like, hey, I get the concept. <laughs> I think. But, but if you look at like, hey, there's, there's some multiple uh, statistics or mm -hmm. research done, right? It, if you look at the market at large, and there's always the, the big debate, how many hotels are there? Well, okay, like, and, and how many, what is the fine of hotel? But let's yeah. not get into the nitty gritty of that. But but estimated, and I think it's, it's a directionally good guess, is about 50% of the hotels have a PMS. The rest mm -hmm. of the uh, hotels around the world just still work on something else, a diary, Excel sheet, pen and paper, mm -hmm. I call calendar, whatever they use. So there's only, that, that's already like a step up. Many of the hotels, there, there's a good portion of hotels we talk to that have no PMS, that just known. They don't have any distribution system. They're like, we've been doing this for ages. Then, you know, and if you then look at the market, like only uh, of those uh, uh, hotels, uh, only 5% have actually an RMS. So RMS is still very early stages. Mm -hmm. right? PMS mm -hmm. has already gotten caught yeah, up yeah. much more. I think that's one. Then if you kind of, again, it's easy to think about all the fast forward brands that are top of mind when you think about, you know, innovative and, and, and a, you know, apps and AI, we control all the terms at it, uh, brands that are always at the forefront, but the majority of hospitality industry is, is old fashioned. And mm -hmm. when you, t and again, when you talk to these people, and we, we talk to hundreds of these hotels with our team uh, every, every day, uh, most of them, when is the last time you've raised the pricing? Yeah. Well, the last time actually when we converted from builder <laughs> to euro, right? They're like, these are, these are serious answers. And we laugh about it. And, but for the last time I revisited pricing was actually when uh, I took over the hotel from my parents. These, these are honest answers that people give. Like, oh, wow. I've had seasonal pricing winter and summer for yep. as far as I can remember. And so the, there's much more convincing to do on the concept of you need to, dynamic pricing is not, just it's even adjusting it more anymore. often, yeah. Before, yeah, yeah. And even adjusting it is more often than than actually convincing us on the software. Right? This, mm -hmm. this is the hurdle. Of people, uh, and and then you get a lot of obstacles. Like, hey, well, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's we we, we shouldn't do that. We have regular yeah. customers that have been coming here for fifteen years. Why should we, you know, now all of a sudden ask different prices? So there's much more obstacles in that sense than on. Um, buying our product obviously gotcha. <laughs> yeah once <laughs> yeah once, yeah. once, once they can see yeah. the buying is is worth it, it that it, just becomes it, a business it, roi exactly it's like why should i yeah. even engage first of all yeah and and i think then this has been you know not me but there's so many uh industry thought leaders that have, have uh similar thoughts around this or similar purposes around this is around like RMS is probably now the biggest revenue driver for a hotel that you can get, right? Mm -hmm. We see this with customers. If you do nothing and we plug them in, there is a, a minimum of an average of 20% uh, or plus uh, increase in, in total revenue for that hotel from doing really? nothing really? to really? use RMS. Sorry, seriously, because we hadn't spoke about these stats before, so I'm not asking you to highlight something we prepped up. So, <laughs> no. So, but you yeah. could take if a hotel nothing, that has nothing yeah. and you could plug your solution in and they on mm -hmm. average would see a 20% increase. increase. In. Yes, correct. Okay. And wow. that's the, that's the power. And that's, and, and that's, um, yeah, I'm sure our competitors have similar, sure. similar yeah, yeah, yeah. stats. Yeah. It's not that, yeah. you know, hey, we're, we're great, but then it's not that we're, we, we found, found it something that is truly unique <laughs> in the world. Uh, but uh, doing nothing to, to di applying dynamic pricing has a dramatic increase of your uh, top line revenue uh, as a hotel, of room revenue. And that's, uh, there's, there's an easy solution to drive more uh, revenue for you as a hotel. Yeah. Which I guess comes back to your and point. Obviously that, when you switch, so, w w sorry, and obviously when you switch from, already, uh, from one system to the other, that increase is, 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 is different. But yeah. uh, from yeah, doing yeah. nothing but to from nothing buying to revenue something. is, yeah. 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 No, that yeah. makes sense.
That makes a lot of sense. And as you say, yes, okay, we're we're talking to you guys. Um, so you're going to be talking mm-hmm. about the room price genie. But there's also, I guess, there's also a broader industry message that we get from all of the partners that we have that are in the revenue management tech space. Is just they just wish hotels. Look, whoever you end up choosing, just please, first of yeah. all, just please, first of all, engage in the fact that just by doing something, you can you can gain more revenue. It, you can gain more, more revenue, and I think it was always the, the hey, I'm in a, the, the previous look at it was like I'm in an advantage because I use an RMS system. I'm I'm an I'm an uh, advanced revenue manager uh, of look at supplier advanced revenue management, and I am actually making more money, and the rest of the world is all left behind. Yeah. Well, I think that's that, that's dramatically going to change uh, in, the, in the coming years, and now it's going to be well if you don't use it, you're going to be left behind. behind, and it's yeah. not an advantage anymore. It's it's a requirement to yeah. to have. Like like a PMS these days, like a channel manager, like a good booking engine. That whole that whole system revenue management is catching up. And yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. So yeah. very 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 quickly, because you've told us a lot about which which kind of I think helps to position where what differentiates you, what may be makes you slightly more unique to some of the other names that mm-hmm. people would be familiar with. Um, when you talk about your going from doing nothing to doing something. And you speak about the implementing and getting the system up and running. How complex is Room Price Genie to, you know, if I if I kind of say right, okay, let's do it. I want it in my hotel. How how much time have I now got to invest all with my staff to yeah. get it going? Yeah, uh, good question. And the, the biggest question mark or the biggest variation around this is implementation time for a PMS integration. Yep. Oh, okay. Um, so th- that is really the factor that, that, that implements a lot. But, but we say about in, in two and a half hours, we can get you up and running. Okay. Um, okay. We're so talking hours we don't, then, we right? Don't okay. take, <laughs> we're talking hours, yeah. So, so in general, um, if you kind of look at the flow, um, uh, we get you onboarded. Uh, basically, you get trained on the system. You learn the basic highlights. And you kind of get the overview of, of, of know how to navigate and use and and uh, and, uh, and apply and understand what we're doing. And and the way and uh, that really we want to make it as visible as possible. It's on the black box concept. We say this is your base price based on factor A, B, C, based on your personal preferences as well. How aggressive do you want to be? If you want to be extremely aggressive. You can dial up, uh, or if you want to like be a little bit more moderate, you can set tops and lows, things like that. Um, uh, and then uh, we we train you on the system. We do one uh, roughly hour implementation call, where we uh, where we load all your your rates and your your room types, and 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 make sure the connections all work, and check everything, and validate everything. And then um, a week or two weeks after, typically two weeks, we do another our call where we answer any questions we look at what the success has been so far kind of understand where where things are going and how things are working and then you're off to the races um and that's uh we don't have to load historical data we only use uh current and future uh forward data uh, so that helps us a lot as well the challenge is really like hey, there are systems that are super easy to integrate click click get an api key and, and we're, <laughs> we're, we're we're off uh, and there are systems where yeah, you know, you have to send in forms, <laughs> taxes, and yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah. We could we could name a few uh, names, but we won't go there. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. But 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 really, the 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 goal is to to get people off to the off to this very easily. And 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 again, because the product is, uh, uh, we don't do auxiliary revenue. We have we, we we there's there's things that we decided not to do. Obviously, there's no there's no huge learning curve and huge setup curve either. It's the the kiss principle: keep it simple, stupid kind of thing, isn't it? It's exactly. Like, let, let, yeah, let's, yeah. let's just get it going. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Well, look again. Thank you to Room Price Genie coming on board as a as a partner. Thank you to you for taking the time to talk with us today, uh, and look forward to working with you guys in in the future on other other content that we'll be discussing and, and working working through. So thanks again for your time. Much appreciated. Excellent. Thanks for your time, Trevor. Appreciate it. Well, I hope that conversation was of interest, and thanks again to Thomas for joining us. If you have any thoughts or views on this conversation please feel free to comment below. If you like the discussion, please don't forget a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more of our videos, here is a link to our expert insights playlist. Here is the link to our coffee time chat playlist. And here is the button if you'd like to subscribe 
so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks again for watching.